guys welcome back to my channel Simone here so today I'm going to be talking about food related fiction and this is my reads and recommends video so I have five books that I've read and five books that I haven't read and I want to talk about them now because I the five books I've read doesn't necessarily mean I love those books they're just five food related books that I've read and then five books that I've been recommended that's the reads and recommends part just so you know that the ones I'm talking about that I've read it doesn't mean I love them um, I will also tell you if I recommend them or not so the first book um, that I have read this one I don't actually recommend that much um, but this is James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl obviously this isn't the title there is a giant peach in this um, this basically follows a young boy named James who is given the opportunity to get away from his horrible aunts and um, he is given these like little green things that are supposed to he's supposed to I think eat them and they're supposed to make him into something amazing what he ends up doing is dropping them and they go into the soil and a giant peach is formed and then he goes inside the peach and meets all these like creatures and then they go on an adventure basically now I liked this up until the point where the peach started to move and they went off and diff did different things um, there's like cloud men and stuff happens and I just found that all a little bit far-fetched which I mean I know a giant peach is far-fetched but it got to a point where I was like I just can't be on board with this anymore so I didn't love this one but it is one that if you like Roald Dahl's writing you'll probably like this I did like the writing style I just the storyline just wasn't for me the second one I've read is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien now if you've read The Hobbit or you've seen the movies you'll know that hobbits love to eat and it's like one of their big things they have I think there's like 12 different meals in a day they have like breakfast second breakfast elevens is um, I think there's like brunch lunch dinner supper tea there's all of these different they've got different names for everything and so I thought this was kind of apt to be on this list because they do talk about food a lot in this book um, there's lots of different like types of food that they eat and um, the times when they start to run out of food when they go on this like trek um, are like the worst time in the world for them so I find that really really interesting um, I just really really like The Hobbit generally and um, I think that the food parts of it are just really really fun. Up next is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, um, the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia series um, and this one is by C.S. Lewis. Now I have noticed that most of the books on this list are like middle grade but either way I think food is the main part of them. Um, if you've read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe you'll know that it's about the Pevensey children who basically go through a wardrobe and they come out into the land of Narnia and um, they meet a lion named Aslan who is against the White Witch and they basically have to fight off against each other. Now the food related part of this comes where Edmund who is one of the Pevensey children is kind of bribed by the white witch to bring her his brothers and sisters to the um her palace and she does this by feeding him any food he wants and he chooses turkish delight and she feeds him the best turkish delight he's ever eaten and he apps and she absolutely like gives him as much as he wants and he loves it and I always find this really interesting that the way to a little boy's heart was through his stomach and um, I do think that's really funny. I personally really don't like Turkish Delight but I get the appeal of like your favourite food like enticing you to do something so um, yeah I loved that about this. Number four of course could not I could not do this video without mentioning Harry Potter. Um, I've got the Philosopher's Stone here but to be honest with you they're all pretty food related in parts. Um, I will link my read along playlist um, if you want to. I'm on chapter four at the minute and um, there's not been too much food stuff yet but I will link that playlist so you can go and check it out if you like it. But basically this, if you don't know what Harry Potter is, which I feel like nobody doesn't know what it is, um, but basically Harry Potter is a young boy who um, finds that he's a wizard and goes to a magical school of witchcraft and wizardry and in that school there's a lot of food. They go to like a feast pretty much every day. There's like amazing food described in this throughout. Um, and I think it's really interesting because it massively contradict, like contrasts with the fact that when Harry was living at home with the Dursleys, who are his um, aunt and uncle, um, he's basically given like very little food or he's given like a can of soup or just like really basic food like he gets like bread or something whereas when he goes to Hogwarts and on the very first day for example in this one they have this massive feast of like 
seven types of potatoes and like meat coming out of your ears and just so much stuff and I really really liked reading about that because it was like he was suddenly getting everything that he'd ever wanted so yeah I really really enjoyed this book and um, obviously and the food related parts are really really interesting. And in complete contradiction of that is the next one and the last of my I've already read books and that is Life of Pi by Jan Martel. Now I didn't love this book, I actually gave it a two star, however the interesting part of this, um, if you don't know what Life of Pi is, it's about a boy who basically gets stranded on a boat with a tiger and other creatures and um, is trying to like make his way to land basically without being killed first um, but this has a massive food element to it because he's essentially rationing off the little food that he does have um, because essentially like he knows he's got so much food like not enough food like at all to, to survive but he's trying to make it work and it's about the rationing and it's about having very little food and still trying to survive while also potentially becoming a food source himself because the tiger obviously and um yeah this was really really interesting it was like two different sides it was like he could be food but he needs food to eat so yeah really liked that again i wasn't a big fan of this book just because of the way it was written but i do think that the storyline is interesting so now i'm going to talk about the five books that i've been recommended or that i really want to read um in the future um yeah let's talk about those so the first is one that I'm pretty sure I have probably read as a child but it was such a long time ago and I can't remember. I know I've seen the TV or like the film adaptation because there's been loads of them but I really want to read the physical book and that is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Um, as it seems and quite obviously Roald Dahl is the like king of food related fiction and I just really like the fact that this basically obviously is set in a chocolate factory and this basically is where they go and there's so many different things there's like fountains of chocolate instead of water and just different elements like made of different things there's like chewing gum that tastes like a roast dinner and so many different things really cool like interesting inventions that like he must have spent ages coming up with them and I think that really really interesting I love the films because I certainly think that this is one of those um books that was really easily adaptable to TV. Um, I also think, think that this has that opposite thing that I was trying to say earlier about somebody who comes from having not much food because Charlie Bucket who is the main character in this it comes from a very non-wealthy family and he kind of has to deal with the fact that they don't have much money and they don't have much stuff basically and so he doesn't have a lot of like extravagant dinners and things and then suddenly he goes to this chocolate factory and it's amazing so yeah love that con like contrast and um, really really enjoyed and I've seen the film like I say and love the film so I'm really looking forward to reading the book. The next book that I really want to read is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and this just sounds like a very interesting and like strange book however I don't know too much about this I know it follows a woman after the second world war trying to come up with a book topic to write about and she gets a letter I believe from a man who has found her name in another book and the letter basically invites her to join him and so she goes to Guernsey and she meets this man who is very eccentric and has this kind of club hence the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and it's about that I think I'm not entirely sure like I don't really know too much about this but it does sound really fun and a potato peel pie like I need to know what that is because if it's what it sounds like, that's disgusting. <laughs> However, I'm sure there's more to it than that. Next up is a classic that I do really want to read, and I haven't really read much by Charles Dickens, um, and this is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now, I know this is a Christmas book, but I'm not really a seasonal reader, so I don't really mind if I read it now or at Christmas itself. But um, I've obviously heard the story of this many, many times, and I'm, I'm sure most of you have as well. Um, this basically is about a man who, a man named Scrooge, who is very, very grumpy, and he is very much greedy about money. And he basically is invited um, by his son, by his nephew, I believe, to Christmas dinner and he turns it down he won't give to charity he's very much like a bar humbug that's his uh, catchphrase so then in the middle of the night he is visited by the christmas past christmas future so christmas past christmas present and christmas future and he then it kind of 
is taught why he's like this and he's kind of told he's like helped to realize what will happen to him if he doesn't change his ways and i really really want to read this book because like i said i've seen so many different adaptations of it um and i just think that the book will be really interesting i've heard obviously amazing things about charles dickens writing um the food part of this comes in where i believe at least that um obviously there's the christmas dinner element but also one of um or scrooge's only employee is a man named bob cratchit whose son tiny tim is very very ill and um they have again not very much food at all nothing really going for them and i think at least in the adaptations i've seen and i don't think this is a spoiler but when scrooge kind of decides to change his ways he gives them this huge feast and goes to christmas dinner so i'm just really really looking forward to reading a charles dickens book and the fact that it's a christmasy one and has like christmas dinner in it is a bonus for me i'm sorry that the lighting keeps changing by the way i'm using natural light and it suddenly got really really like cloudy and overcast outside although it was really sunny like two minutes ago so if it changes again i'm really really sorry but i'm trying my best <laughs> the fourth one um is winnie the pooh and i think i watched a video by Hayley from Bookland, Hayley in, Book Hayley in Bookland, who um, I'll link her channel below, but she talks about in her April TBR that she really wants to read Winnie the Pooh, and it's made me really want to read it as well. And if you don't know what Winnie the Pooh is, Winnie the Pooh is a bear who lives in the Hundred Acre Wood with all his friends. He has Piglet, and Kanga and Roo, and Eeyore, and the owl, what's the owl's name? Owl, maybe? I don't know. Um, and basic and tigger obviously and um winnie the pooh really likes honey like he loves honey and he gets into lots and lots of scrapes um because he really wants to eat honey and he can't um because he he's trying to get it from like bees and stuff and that's just never a good idea so yeah that's pretty much the food part of that but i just really want to read it i don't really know what the actual like main story of winnie the pooh is i know when i was younger i used to have a like collection of different winnie the pooh stories but i'm not sure what the like main winnie the pooh story is so i'm really really interested to read that and um like i said um hayley is reading it this month i believe and uh yeah she really inspired me to read it so that's another one on my list and the final book that i really want to read is actually apparently the 35th book in a series like that's ridiculous um it's in the hercule poirot series by agatha christie and it is the adventure of the christmas pudding now i've realized now i'm talking about two christmas books and it's april but i'm okay with that so i hope you are too um i don't know anything about this or why it's food related or where the christmas pudding comes into it but it's hercule poirot and i really want to read more Agatha Christie books. I mentioned this in my last video, which was the four, my four star reads part two of 2017. Where are we? Um, and um, yeah, I just really want to read more Agatha Christie. So, I mean, I'm one of those people that likes to start at the beginning of series. So I don't think I'll ever get to this like very soon because clearly I've got 34 books to read before it. However, it sounds really interesting. I love Agatha Christie. I love Hercule Poirot. I've seen so many different episodes of Hercule Poirot on TV. So yeah, so I feel like this is going to be up, right up my street. I love crime stuff. So that is the fifth and final book that I have been recommended that's food related. So that is my food related fiction reads and recommends video. I hope that you guys really liked this. Again, I'm really sorry about the lighting. And give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.